Good morning, everybody. That should be better. I'm going to type something into the chat here, guys. You can use the chat if you're signed in. If you're here, just let me know in the chat. We're going to start just a little bit after 10. We'll give everybody a chance to log on and fix any issues that might be going on. But if you can hear me and you want to say hello, just type that in the chat. And for those of you that are watching, uh, make sure you're taking advantage of the best part of this lesson, uh, which is being able to make your bids as we go through this. We're going to see a lot of hands and a lot of slam decisions. So if you want to play along at home, just log on to bidbox.xyz and you'll see the screen that you're looking at right here on the broadcast. It'll just say thank you. Class will start soon. And... We will get going in a few minutes. I see we have a, some people from California. Thank you for waking up so early. Sorry about the time change. Uh, I set this up quite a few uh, weeks ago and not only did I have the wrong date originally, but I also <laughs> thank, thanks to Eileen for sending me an email to realize that I'm, uh, I, I was actually competing with another lesson that I'm giving at 11 a.m. So thank you guys all for being patient and getting here early in the morning, especially the West Coasters. And I'm just going to wait until the number of people on the YouTube channel is about the same as the people I see logged into Bidbox. I want you all to have a chance because we're going to get right to it today. We're going to go for about uh, 30 to 45 minutes and we're going to see a lot of decisions and a lot of full hands. So we're going to we're going to bid right from the start to the end of each of these auctions and you'll get to kind of see the results of these hands uh, afterwards with a full diagram. So if you guys have taken a look at the slam page on the website, you'll have a good idea of some of the stuff we're going to use today. We'll probably see some Jacoby 2 no Trump. We'll definitely see some key card and some control bidding. So we'll have a lot to think about throughout these hands. So give it a second, guys. You're looking at the screen right now. You're halfway there. If you want to bid along with us as we go through all of these problems, you just want to go to www.bidbox.xyz and you will have what you're looking at on the screen right on your phone or your other browser window. Wow, minus 31 degrees in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Ouch. <laughs> Stay inside. <laughs> All right, we're getting close to equivalent numbers with the people that are on YouTube and the people that are on Bidbox. So we're going to give this a roll. We're going to start the class right now. And I'm going to give you your first hand. So on your first hand, you're going to have an opportunity to use the Jacoby 2 no Trump convention. And that's exactly what's happening on this hand. We've opened one spade with our cards and partner has jumped to 2 no Trump. So for those of you that, you know, may have seen this before, it's going to be pretty simple for you. But for those of you that have not, the do no trump bid is simply a way that we can show a game forcing hand with four or more spades. So that's exactly what partner is showing. However, there's some system to this. All right, so when our partner bids two no trump, we're going to have specific bids that are going to show certain different things about our hand. Now I'm not going to ruin the surprise just yet. I want you to make your call and then we'll talk about what these responses are and how they can be helpful going forward. So 
As I said, we opened one spade and partner bid Jacoby to no Trump, and it's our choice as to what to do here. You can see it's it's very early in the morning, so the bids are coming in a little slowly at the moment, but we're going to give you plenty of time to get your calls in. And just remember, I'll give you a hint if you're if you're drawing a blank on this. Whenever we find a fit and we know we're going to game, any new suit is going to be used for something different, right? We're never going to be showing a different suit at this point after we've already guaranteed we had a nine card major suit fit. So I'm going to come over here and make my bid. And this is the correct bid for this particular hand. So the Jacoby Tuno Trump shows a game forcing hand and at least four card support. And after that bid, and only directly after that bid, that's a common point of confusion with a lot of my students, we're able to show either shortness or extra length or varying degrees of balanced hands. And the way it goes is this. Any new suit we bid at the three level in response to Jacoby Tuno Trump shows shortness, a single tenor void in that suit. And that should make sense logically just because we know we're playing spades and we want to be able to describe certain features of our hand as quickly as possible after we find the idea that we have a fit and enough to play game so any new suit is going to be something different and only in this spot directly in response to the jacoby tuno trumpet are we going to be showing shortness right so this first bid at the three level shows shortness that's why three hearts is the correct bid here those of you that bid three diamonds showed shortness in diamonds those of you that bid three spades denied shortness. So whether you think you're strong or weak or have extra values or not, if you have shortness, no matter what the strength of your hand, you always show it. That's why we would bid three hearts here. And three no trump could mean a number of different things depending on what you agree, but it's certainly denying shortness. So that's the first step, guys. This is the last time we're technically showing shortness. And I'm... <laughs> It seems funny. I'm giving air quotes that no one can see. But in other situations, after we find a fit, the new suits are going to be more control bids, not necessarily shortness. So we're good on the first one. We have over half of you getting this right. Let's go to the next hand and further this auction. So after we bid three hearts, which showed shortness, our partner now bids four clubs. What could that be, and what's your next bid with this end? And again, guys, if you have any questions, just type those right into the chat on YouTube. I'll be able to see those right here. Also, if you have just logged on and are not on the bidding site yet, just go to bidbox.xyz, and you'll be able to bid all these hands with us as we go forward. So after... This auction, our partner has shown support for spades. We've shown shortness in hearts, and our partner has now bid four clubs. And always keep these things in mind, folks. When we find a nine card major suit fit, once again, we will always be playing in that suit. So these new suits are used for something else. And a lot of you are. Looks like right on the same wavelength. We have a few bids waiting to be made, so we'll give you a couple more seconds. Okay, and I'm going to come over here and make my bid now. The correct bid is four diamonds. And the four club bid is a Q bid. That's right, Denzel. After we have found our fit, all these new suits are used for something different. So that immediate response we already talked about, we have our scripted responses to the Jacoby Tuno Trump bid. Now, any new suit by either of us will show control. And control is... 
only going to be shown in these situations. Two things have to be met. First of all, we have to make sure we have a fit, and we do. And we have to make sure we're in a game forcing auction, which we are. The two no trump bids solved both of those for us. So after we go through our response with three hearts, the new suits now are control in that suit. And for those of you that are just starting out with controls, I recommend just bidding first round control first. Uh, those of you that are a little more experienced, you might be bidding first or second round control. But partners bid here, especially in these cases, will always show first round control. And that is exactly what partners showing with their four club bid. The second thing that control bids do is they tell partner that we have a desire to play slam. So that four club bid does both of those things. It shows control in clubs and it also says, hey, I have interest in playing higher based on what I know now. So let's continue this discussion. So we would bid four diamonds to continue this control bidding sequence. And that's all we're doing. We're saying, hey, I heard you had control in clubs. I have control in diamonds. Tell me what you want to do next. And let's see what happens next on this end. So after we bid four diamonds, our partner bids four, no trump. And for those of you that are wondering, we are agreeing with our partner in this situation that we're playing 1430, which is key card. And our, our responses will be in that 1430 category. So take a second and make your response with this hand. All right, Denzel, uh, if you want to play along, you just want to log in to www.bidbox.xyz. Uh, please do not put your choice of bids in the chat. We want everyone to have the ability to make their own bids. So if you want to bid along, the address is www.bidbox.xyz. So that's where you want to be, buddy. All right, let's take a look at the results for this particular hand we should have bid five spades and that is our 1430 key card this is showing two key cards with the queen of trump all right so when we're when we're going about this we are going to first of all make sure we remember what the trump suit is and i know we only bid the suit once we opened a spade and partner bid two no trumps. So really we haven't bid our trump suit since the first bid. However, we do have the queen of that suit and we have two key cards, the ace of diamonds and the ace of hearts. So we're gonna bid five spades to show that. And now let's see what happens next. So after five spades, our partner bids five no trump. I'm not gonna say anything about what this may be. I want you guys to make your choice first. And then we'll come back and discuss what this five no trump bid is going to mean for us going forward. So remember, no bids in the chat, just bid on the site, www.bidbox.xyz. If you head to that site, you'll be able to make all your bids directly through that app. This one's a good one. We have several different answers. So once again, our partner after our five spade response to key card has now bid five no trump.
Yeah, I see. Uh, we had a couple. We had a couple of errors because we we were allowed to make insufficient bids. I need to change the app to do that. Uh, the correct bid is six spades, and the reason is we don't have anything else to say. And the five no trump bid does two things. The first thing it does it just asks for kings, and the way we're going to do this if we're playing key card Blackwood, we're going to bid our kings specifically, meaning treat it like a control bid when partner bids five no trump you're going to bid your lowest ranking king and try to tell partner all the kings you may have between the five no trump bid and the trump suit and as you can see with this hand guys we have no kings <laughs> at all and we certainly don't have any below the trump suit so the correct call is just to bid six spades the five no trump bid also and maybe more importantly in some situations that i'm sure we'll see later the five no trump bid shows not only do we have all the key cards and the queen of trump but it shows a desire to play higher than six always so that's what it always has to be if we're ever going to bid five no trump and the only reason we ever will is if we have designs on grand slam which partner did on this hand however in this spot we cannot make this bid unless we are guaranteed to have all the key cards so that's what partners telling us they're saying hey i have all the key cards i want you to bid a king if you have it and here we certainly did not have it so we just bid six spades and that's where this auction will end and i want to show you the full hand here and this is it you can see that partner is sitting in the north chair and they they clearly have a very strong hand and really at the end there after they went through the process of control bidding which was great and then asking for aces they they just want to find out about the king of clubs and in fact the screen you're looking at here if partner heard us bid six clubs instead of six spades they very likely would have just bid seven spades so that's exactly what partner was looking for and if you want to take a second look at that north hand that north hand is obviously very strong. It has a heck, heck of a club suit, but remember, we already found a nine card major suit fit. So that club suit is gonna be useful in no matter which contract we're playing in. And after their hand finds out we have two key cards and the queen, it can C7 if we have the king of clubs. <laughs> and that's unfortunately for us, we did not. So we're gonna just bid six, even though seven is wonderful if we did have the king of clubs. And seven we'll make on this hand, but we're gonna be bidding it, needing a finesse to win. If you can take a look at that, guys, we, we can see that if the club finesse does not win, we cannot make seven. So in this hand, we stayed in a very safe, small slam. So I'm gonna Give it about uh, a minute, a minute and a half. If you guys have any questions so far before we press forward, just type them right into the bid box. Oh, uh, Jim Smith has a question. How was two no Trump justified? Uh, this wasn't a two no Trump opening bid. The, the top of the auction was clipped off. The auction actually started with South opening one spade. And now Jim North made the Jacoby two no Trump bid, which essentially just says, partner, I have enough to play game and I have at least four spades. So it's what we call our forcing major suit raise. So the, the top of this auction was clipped off because we had so many bids on this auction, but legitimately South opened one spade and North responded to no Trump, which was conventional. It just said, hey partner, I have a game forcing hand with four spades. And again, when we have a nine card major suit fit, and a side suit, it's still great to play in the major because that side suit's going to be a terrific source of tricks. Okay, if those are the only questions, and I'll give you about 30 seconds more, we'll move on to the next hand. But again, if you have any questions, keep me honest. Ask those right in the chat and we'll get to them. All right, well, we're back in business here. We are starting the auction by opening a club with the hand you're looking at now. And our partner is responding one heart. And it's our call. What do we do with this hand? Again, we opened a club and partner responded one heart.
And for those of you that may have just joined, remember you can bid along with us right on the app. It's www.bidbox.xyz. You can open up a new browser on your computer or just grab a phone or tablet and you'll be able to bid right along with us as we go. All right, we have over 50% of you making the correct call, which is three clubs. And this is a tough hand to deal with. Uh, this is hard because it's actually much stronger than your garden variety three club bid, or excuse me, your garden variety just rebid of your suit. But we kind of are stuck for what we can do here. We can try to bid no trump which some of you did but we're really misrepresenting the shape of our hand and also we may be underbidding to some degree uh, those of you that jumped to three no trump your bid shows kind of a hand like this probably not as strong though your bid of three no trump just says hey partner i'm likely to be able to take nine tricks those of you that bid two no showed 18 19 balanced you know may get you to the right spot but also may you may find yourself playing hearts if partner thinks you're somewhat balanced. So the best way to do this is just to make a natural bid and jump to three clubs. It's tempting to want to jump shift or reverse here to try to show a very good hand. However, in this spot, you know, you're probably just better off showing natural clubs. Uh, the question from Eileen is, would you ever open this hand two clubs? And the answer is no. Uh, we're, we're not quite strong enough for that, uh, and especially considering that two of our points are a singleton queen. And it looks like, you know, we're close to maybe having the loser count right, but with super shapely hands like this, I think it's very safe to open one of a suit. It's almost impossible for the auction just to pass out from here considering the shape of your hand. And you kind of want room to be able to describe this hand properly. And that's what we're doing here with this three club bid. We're bidding three clubs to show obviously extra values. This should be like a, a good 16 to 18 and it should show at least a good six card suit. And yeah, Eileen, points are, are obviously, you know, not necessarily always the right way to go about it, but really the shape of this hand makes it a little bit better to open one and you're not gonna you shouldn't really ever fear the auction passing out completely when your hand is severely unbalanced so it's safe in my opinion just to open a club and and try to make a strong rebid and see what happens and as it turns out our partner makes a call over three clubs and their call is four clubs so now take your call with this hand So now after we jump to three clubs, our partner just raises to four clubs and it's our call. So what are we doing with this end? We have six answers so far and most of them are very reasonable. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you what I would bid. However, I like another bid as well. So I'm gonna bid four diamonds, uh, and that's the answer I've I've put down here. Four no trump 
is obviously very reasonable as well. So either one of those are fine. We're going to practice our control bidding here. And also, I kind of want to find out information in maybe a more specific way here. So I don't need to bid four now if I can bid four diamonds and hope my partner does something else. And now I'll kind of get to see their interest level as well. Four no Trump will get you probably the same information, right? You're asking for key cards and you're missing three of them. So either one is going to be fine, but let's take it from four diamonds on. Those of you that bid four no Trump, you get full credit on this board. Not an incorrect answer. We're just going to go about it in a slightly different way to see if we can get into some more trouble here. So after we bid four diamonds, which showed our control and diamonds, our partner bid four hearts, which we should know says, hey, partner. I have control in hearts as well. So what's our call now? And I can just bring up another potential issue with uh, with the four no Trump bid. Uh, if we did decide to bid four no Trump and partner bid five diamonds showing three or zero, what would we do? And that, that might be the problem with four no Trump directly. We, we didn't necessarily get to gauge partner slam interest, even though they did bid four clubs, right? They could have passed three clubs with a bad hand. So we know we're going to game. The question is, are we going to go to slam? So we give it at least an oppor sorry, we give partner at least an opportunity to show something good about their hand. Uh, Donna, a control is not the same as a stopper. And, and for our purposes today, we're, we're going to use our control bids to show first round control in a suit, which means it's an ace or a void, something that will win the first trick led in that suit. Uh, the more advanced way is to show first or second round control. So depending on your comfort level, that those are the two ways you're gonna do it. A stopper is essentially just a holding that's gonna take a trick at some point. So a stopper would be like queen jack 10 in a suit. You know you're taking a trick. However, that would not be a control. That's a good question. And my call now is gonna be four no trump. And we should, absolutely when we hear partner show some sort of control in their hand they're also saying hey i have interest in going further with this hand so when i see the four heart bid now is where i want to bid four no trump and start to ask for key cards i it seems pretty likely that i'm going to be playing slam but let's see what partner does They bid five diamonds, which has way more meaning now than it would have had we just bid four no Trump directly. And that should make sense to you guys. That should guarantee a certain number of key cards in their hand.
there are 10 answers and I think two of them are correct so far, which I like. I like wrong answers. It means it's a good question. And those of you that just bit a slam, I'm never going to say you did a bad thing, right? Especially, you know, if you're, if you're being aggressive on this hand, you're going to do okay. But we still have information that we can get to try to get our absolute best score on a hand like this, which is why the best bid is five, no Trump. And, and this lets not only our partner know, but it lets our partner certainly know that we are interested in playing higher and we have all the key cards. That is absolutely the most important thing here. We want to communicate so we both know we're dealing with every key card in the deck. So bidding five no Trump tells partner that and is absolutely always, like we talked about earlier, going to be a try to play Grand Slam. And that's the only reason we're doing this is to not only confirm we have all the key cards, but to at least get partner to maybe help us find the best place we can go. So right now, partner knows we have all five key cards and the queen of Trump. So we'll see what they do after this five no Trump bid. Some of you bid six clubs, which is fine. You're probably going to get to the best slam usually. Seven clubs, I would be more tempted if you gave me a choice between six and seven. I would be much more tempted to bid seven in this case, based on what I know. But why not just take the pathway that gives us more information before we make a decision, not only on level, but also on strain. And let's take a look at what's gonna happen next. So after we bid five no Trump, our partner bids six hearts. Now take a second and think about what that would imply and then make your call. And we're at six hearts now. We have nine answers, and one of them is correct. So I'm going to give you guys a little, those of you that haven't bid yet, I'm going to give you a couple more seconds, because we should know exactly. Okay, uh, I, the question I see right now is I have no idea what Six Hearts says, and I'll tell you, it says two things, but the main thing it says is that partner has the king of hearts. That's exactly what they're showing with that bid, right? The five no Trump bid asks for kings while also guaranteeing that we have all the key cards in the queen of Trump. So it says, hey, partner, if you have a king in your hand, I want to hear about it. And in, in this case, the six heart bid actually says I have the king of hearts and I do not have the king of diamonds because we're going to bid these in an up the line fashion so oh, we have two of you with the best bids so far uh can, can you guys hear me sorry can you hear what i'm saying eileen says there's no sound hello Okay, good, good, good. Sorry. Uh, did you, you, you all heard the answer to what six hearts was, I hope? Great. Okay, terrific. Uh, I'm going to make my bid, and it's the bid that only two of the students made, and it's seven no Trump. And this becomes a counting exercise. If we take all the information we've garnered so far through our key card sequence in the auction, we know partner has three key cards. They're the Ace of Spades, the Ace of Hearts, and the King of Clubs. 
Those are the three key cards our partner has. We also know that they now have shown the King of Hearts. So if we just count our tricks, we can see that we're going to have seven club tricks because partner has the king. We're going to have three spade tricks because partner has the ace. That's 10. We're going to have the ace of hearts. That's 11. The king of hearts, that's 12. The queen of hearts, that's 13. And the ace, king of diamonds. So we can count every trick in the deck and then some. So when you can do that, and these key card sequences are, aren't going to come up very often, but sometimes you can get to a point where you can just count 13 tricks. You absolutely bid Grand Slam, but bid the one that gives you the biggest bang for your buck, right? You're going to bid the highest scoring Grand Slam, which is seven no trump. So when you can count to 13, and I know all of my local students are saying, well, you told me never to bid seven. And that's always what I hear on hands like this. But I give one disclaimer there when I say that. It is usually wrong to bid seven, especially at the bridge club, unless you can count to 13 tricks. Right? And this is a hand that even when partner over bids five diamonds, we have seven, 10, 11, 12 tricks, right? So we're just looking for one more king in order to get to 13. And we'll get there as soon as partner makes that response. If partner didn't have a, a king to bid or didn't want to play higher themselves, now they would have just returned to six clubs. But the fact that they went beyond that means Okay, we can definitely count to 13 now. Let's dance. And seven no trump is the best. Three of you got this right. Nine of you bid seven clubs, which is a close second. And this is a pretty reasonable look at what this what this would look like on a traveler at a bridge club, right? You'd have a couple people getting it perfect by bidding seven no. And those of you in seven clubs would be so upset when you looked at it and got like 48% for making your grand slam because three people got a better score from bidding the, the slam that scores higher. All right, guys, next hand. And I think we might be able to, yeah, th there's, uh, there's the hand in, in its entirety from the last one, guys. Real quick look at that. You can see partner has exactly what they expect we expect them to have, right? They have the ace, king of hearts and the ace of spades, which is enough to just make 13 tricks. Bingo. Okay, now we get the opponents into the auction a little bit. Our partner opened a diamond, and our right-hand opponent has now overcalled two spades. Two spades is preemptive. It shows a bad hand and a very long spade suit, six, six or more usually. So it's your call with this hand. This is my favorite question so far. We have about six or seven different bids already on this hand, so there's a lot of confusion as to what's the best way to go about this. I like it. These are tough hands when they preempt, and that's why preempting works well. I'm going to get in the way and force them to do something incorrectly. Okay, the correct bid is the bid I'm going to make right now. It's three clubs. Those of you that doubled, I know what you were thinking, or at least I know what most of you were thinking. You were thinking the hand is too strong just to bid, so you wanted to double and then bid. However, I have to tell you, your double always shows four hearts or more, no matter what. It's the negative double. So when you've doubled with this hand, you're showing four cards or longer in this heart suit, which definitely we don't have. The good thing about being in the responder seat is that new suits are absolutely forcing. So you don't have to jump to four clubs. You don't have to Q-bid their suit right away, and it would be 
questionable as to what that would show here anyway, you can just make a forcing bid by bidding at the lowest available level. They've already chewed up enough room for us. We don't want to chew up more room by jumping around. Just bid three clubs, and that's how we're going to start with these hands. The, the doublers, you were thinking power double probably. You wanted to double and then bid your suit, but you're never going to convince partner that you don't have hearts if you start with a double in this hand. So just bid your best suit naturally at the three level. And after you do that, partner's going to bid three diamonds. And I made the next bid for you. I, I bid three spades. And I, I think I probably just reversed the order of this uh, or missed the bid. But three spades by this hand is, if we can just understand it as it's absolutely strong and it's forcing. Partner may think it's a look to play three no trump, but we certainly intend to bid again with a hand like this. So I'm going to bid three spades to hear what our partner has to say next. And I'm doing so because I certainly want to find out at least some more information. And I absolutely know we have at least a game, but maybe very likely a slam. So after I make this forcing three spade bid, partner bids four diamonds. And now it's your call. And it's helpful to think about what partner's hand probably looks like in these spots as well. So a lot of you bid for no Trump, which is very reasonable here. Um, I'm going to just make a different bid, and it's the bid that I, I actually had on this hand. I'm going to bid six diamonds. And for no Trump would definitely or should definitely be key card here. However, it could also be somewhat confusing. <laughs> and I don't want to confuse my partner. And really... What do I really need to know? I need to know about partner's trump suit. Should I expect partner to have a bad trump suit in this particular spot, considering my strength and the holding I have in the suit? It seems very weird to just jump off to slam sometimes, but in this particular spot, we should know partner is looking at a hand something like this. I right, take a peek at, at the north hand there. They essentially just have a very good diamond suit and not much else and that's kind of what they've been telling us all along they've they rebid their diamonds which doesn't necessarily have to be uh, obviously this long or this good of a suit but now over three spades they've continued on to four diamonds so in this particular spot four no trump would have worked out just as well partner would have shown two key cards and we still would bid six diamonds bidding six diamonds directly uncomplicates the issue a little bit and make sure you get to slam without partner, you know, maybe sitting there thinking for a while, hey, is four no Trump to play here? I don't know. The opponents were interfering and partner cubid their suit. So if you know or you have a very strong suspicion that you belong in a slam and you kind of know where it is, sometimes you can just bomb off and bid it. You have an amazingly powerful hand and a very good holding in a suit we should know partner has lots of. And remember, if you're wondering how we can just jump to slam like this, partner opened the bidding, right? Partner opened one diamond, which is 12 to 21. Obviously, they have 11, but we'll, we'll forgive them for their extra shape. But here, we should know we are very likely to have a slam, and we have good cards everywhere. All right, let's take a look at one or two more, and then I have to end the lesson because... At 11 o'clock, we're doing the weekly online tournament review, and that's going to be every Sunday as well, guys. Uh, we're going to do it live now, and then you have the video to look at afterwards. But if you played in the weekly online tournament, 
and you would like to see some of the pros results and talk about them just in this format, you can join us at 11 and we'll go over that tournament. Okay, next case and probably the last hand, your partner opens one heart and right hand opponent bids three spades. Yeah, uh, sorry, the bid box may have been wrong. I, I believe what happened is I had uh, the wrong hand set up. Uh, we were going to go back and, and then bid three spades, but apologies for that, guys. It was just a mix-up in the way the uh, hands were loaded. And if, you, if, you're, if your bid box freezes or is having any issues, just refresh your browser, and it will come right back. It's usually a circular arrow will be the refresh key. If you just click on that and refresh your browser, you'll get your bid box back. So partner opened a heart and our right hand opponent bid three spades. Last chance to excel, folks. I'm going to be scheduling the next online live lesson some sometime in the near future. And I'm going to try a different way to do it, or at least a, a different lesson. We're going to actually have a live tournament on BridgeBase. Uh, and I'm working that out right now, and we'll have some signups. And we're, we'll play all the same hands at the same time, but we'll be able to play and talk rather than uh, just this, which this is great for practice, but... Nothing really compares to real play. So stay up to date on that, and I will send you guys all emails when I schedule the next cool online event. All right. Got a lot of bids in there. Some are right. My choice here would just be to bid for no Trump. And I, I want to just reference this real quick. When we're in situations like this where partners open to suit, and the opponents have interfered, or even if it went a heart pass, we should make the agreement partnership-wise that the jump to four no trump is always key card for our last bid suit. So jumping to four no trump here is key card for hearts, which is exactly what we want to do with this hand. We could bid four spades also, and for those of you that did that, that's great because you did show a strong hand, a hand that's actually stronger than even game, and heart support. So that was a good choice on your part, but we've kind of gone past what we need, right? If you look at this hand, all we really need to know about are key cards. So in this situation, we're just looking for whether partner has the ace of hearts and maybe the ace of spades, and maybe they have key cards, sorry, outside kings that we might be able to make higher than just six with so we want to start with the best chance to get that information as quickly as we can so we bid four no trump just to ask for key cards and if partner gives us one we'll play six most likely and if they give us two we'll take a look for seven we will ask for kings and we'll confirm all the key cards and then we'll go from there but thank you guys all so much for joining me this morning. Sorry about the time change, but I appreciate you guys accommodating me on that. Um, we'll do another one of these again. Like I said, it'll be different because I want you guys all to be at a bridge table and playing. So we're going to do that on bridge base next time. So I look forward to getting with you with that. And once again, guys, if you played in the weekly online tournament, you should have gotten an invitation for the next live online lesson, which will be coming at you in about 10 minutes. So you can go grab a, a drink or whatever you want to do and meet me back here in about 10 minutes. And we'll go over those tournament hands together. Thanks a lot for joining, everybody, and I will see you soon.